Make no mistake, Gran Turismo 6 is, by most measures, a remarkable racing game. It's impossibly good looking, the handling is spectacular, and the sheer variety of track content it boasts is nothing short of show stopping. The problem is GT6 is beset on all sides by gripes relating to damage, sound and its dating car list, and they're continuing to nibble away at the foundations of this genre titan. Gran Turismo 6 has taken several steps to address a number of its forebearers' key foibles. The first is the installation happens in the background as you play. It's a very welcome change from a long initial install. GT5's aggravating XP ranking system has been punted too, and pleasantly developer polyphony hasn't hidden the vast bulk of its cars inside a small, slowly rotating used car list this time either. The full ranges from all the included car manufacturers can be browsed at will because GT6 doesn't differentiate between so-called standard and premium cars like GT5 does. Sadly, the cars that are polished relics from GT4 are still easily spotted upon close inspection. The jagged B pillar on my 79 Bluebird leaves a lot to be desired during replays, and you could cut bread with a serrated bonnet on this Monaro. But on track and at speed, the difference between GT6's lavishly modelled cars and its second class ones isn't especially stark. I could definitely go without the terrible black silhouettes that pass for a cabin view for GT5's former standard cars though. It's a problem that could have been sidestepped if Polyphony added a bonnet cam, but it's stuck with this ungainly and weird roof view that makes me feel like the world's tallest man enjoying his new sunroof. The detail and lighting on the cars Polyphony has modelled inside and out really is top shelf. You won't find better looking cars anywhere on PS3. Performance customization is largely familiar turf, and visual customization is still well behind the curve. There's no livery editor, and infuriatingly, GT5's ridiculous paint chips have returned. On the topic of unwelcome returns, sound continues to be a major problem. There's very little bark or bite to the muted engine notes, and it's disheartening to slip into a favorite car expecting a high revving snarl and getting a soft and feeble digital buzz. The collision noise is still the same old hollow thud. It sounds like someone tossing an empty refrigerator box into a stairwell. It definitely does feel like GT6 focuses on car quantity over quality in other departments. While it's a huge roster, it's a list that remains heavily weighted towards cars from the 90s and early 2000s that appeared in GT3 and GT4. Significant parts of this car list are seriously stale. There are many, many amazing cars here, and the 1200 car milestone is a neat bullet point, but there are also plenty of inclusions that are gratuitous padding at best. You can't count it twice just because it's purple polyphony. When it comes to tracks, however, GT6 comprehensively murders absolutely everything else out there. It is hands down the best range of circuits assembled for a racing video game I've ever played. Bathurst, Spa, Silverstone, Monza, Brands Hatch, Fuji, Willow Springs, Nürburgring, Suzuka, Daytona, Indy, the list really does go on and on. It's a whistle-stop tour of the most iconic and important race circuits in the world. They're joined by Gran Turismo's trademark fantasy tracks, which I believe have always been the best in the business. Apricot Hill returns in GT6, one of my personal favourites. The tracks look incredible, and dynamic time of day effects and shifting weather means even racing on the same circuit twice can look quite different. Polyphony could have been a little tighter with the zoning, however. I appreciate fewer invisible walls, but GT6 does allow you to take some pretty galling shortcuts. Although it's a game let down by frustrating rolling starts, the racing itself is mostly taut and aggressive. Opponents will still careen into you at times while you're squirming on a brakes into a corner, but for the most part, they're pretty convincing rivals. Winning in GT6 is quite satisfying, as without the crutch of a rewind function that has infiltrated many other races, GT6 rewards finesse and consistency. Its damage system still doesn't punish mistakes though. Offline you can do this, and this, and this, with total impunity. Outside of the regular races, GT6 features bonus events like the excellent Goodwood Festival of Speed Hill Climb, plus some pretty fun eco challenges which challenge you to reach certain distances or record a specific lap time on just one litre of fuel. There are the license tests too, which felt easier than they used to, and the much discussed moon buggy missions, which are dull and stupid. Okay. When you're on one of Gran Turismo 6's absolutely gorgeous tracks, 
fused with the car you're controlling, attacking apexes with confidence and devouring sectors with steely precision, it's not hard to see why GT6 is deservedly regarded as one of the best of its kind. The problem is, the second you thunk into a wall at 200 km per hour and drive off unpunished, or hop into a belching V8 that sounds more like a wheezing milkshake maker, the glass shatters and the illusion evaporates. For everything on Gran Turismo 6, stay with IGN. For now, Lord March is calling me back to Goodwood to leave some more rubber on his driveway.